What's up everyone, Apple Orchard here, and today Apple has released the first beta of iOS 17.4 to developers, and hopefully soon they'll release it to public beta testers. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new in iOS 17.4, along with a possible release date of iOS 17.4 to everyone. So from 17.3, it came in at 6.27 gigabytes on my iPhone 14 Pro right here. Usually when we go from a beta to a beta, it's smaller, or a smooth release to a smooth release, it's small. But when we go from a smooth release to a beta, it just reinstalls everything just in case. If we were to go inside of system settings, general, and then about, we see that we have an I at the end of the build number right here. And this is indicating that Apple has compiled this build quite a few times. And it does make sense because there are some significant features inside of this update that you'll want to know, especially if you live in the EU. Okay, what is new here inside of iOS 17.4? Now the first new feature is pretty significant. If we go into here and then press this emoji button right here, you're gonna see we have a head nodding emoji. We have a couple new emojis in here. Let's see if I can find them all real fast. All right, here are the six new emojis right here. Head nodding, head shaking, little lime emoji. will bring that closer since it's a little bit hard to see. I don't know what that red thing is right there. I think it's a phoenix, a brown mushroom, and a broken chain. So those are the brand new emojis. There's a better look at them coming inside of iOS 17.4. Now the next change is inside of settings right here. If we go down into face ID and passcode, scroll down to stolen device protection, it's now its own separate section instead of it being a button to turn it on or turn it off. So instead you turn it on or off with a toggle right there and then requires a security delay it's away from familiar locations, which I kind of see that being pretty bad. And then always, I'm gonna set that to always because I believe I'm much safer like that, just in case, because I'm a high value person at school and people could just steal my phone and look over my shoulder if I enter my passcode. So just in case, I'm just gonna set that to always and you can see there's a little bug there. Probably why most of you should not be updating. Now the next feature is also inside of settings. If we go down to privacy and security right here, you're gonna see we have a new section called contact list and NFC. Now it's completely blank here and I don't think it's going to apply to anyone except for people in the EU. I'll continue to get on with that in a bit. But as you can see, there's no icon right there. I would have to guess that this was kind of rushed out the door and the person who's in charge of making the icons could not make the icon quite yet. So therefore we don't have an icon there as of right now. Now the next change is inside of Safari. If I were to open up Safari and then scroll up to here, you're gonna see if you compare it to a different version of iOS with the bottom bar, you're gonna see the bottom bar is wider. Now I personally don't like this change, but I bet if they don't revert it back, I'll get used to it. It does look kind of nice. I guess I could see why, just in case you're scrolling right there. But also inside of Safari, if we were to press this icon right here, now it's not showing for me, but there are some new buttons in here. I think if I go to Apple's website, no, I guess not. But you're basically able to turn off animations from this menu right here, which I don't know why I don't have, but it's fine. I don't care about the animations, to be honest. And there's also something that you can completely turn off tracking. Now the next change is inside of the podcast app. So if I go into podcasts right here, you're going to see we have a brand new thing inside of here. So if I press this button right here, you're going to see we have lyrics. So it does say Apple Watch ban, but if we go right here, you're going to see it is doing live lyrics. So it's not just lyrics for the podcast. It is actually live. And if we don't touch it for a while, we have a search button right here. You're even able to search up part of your podcast, which is a pretty convenient feature for the podcast app. Next thing is inside settings, general, and then about, if we go back in here, if we were to scroll down here, you're going to see we have a new section here called identifiable region. So it does say unknown right here. I would have to say it will say United States right here. So this is basically determining who is eligible for the next set of features I'm gonna be talking about. So I bet it will say like Europe or maybe Germany or France or something like that, or the US in my case right there. But for now it says unknown and it is placeholder text. So Apple needs to localize that. All right. Now here are the more significant features and this only applies to you if you're in the European Union or if you know how to like change your region and stuff like that. Now the first thing has to do with the App Store. And in fact, you might not be even needing the App Store. In fact, I think you might want to use the App Store since it's more under control of Apple. 
And the reason why I say that is because if I go back into Safari right here and scroll here, you're gonna see Apple has announced changes to iOS, Safari, and the App Store in Europe. So this is to comply with the Digital Market Act, which also Windows has to comply with, which they've already had, but I guess Apple wants to do it at the last possible minute. And they have to do it before my birthday, which is March 6th, or else Apple won't be able to sell iPhones in the European Union. So basically, they gave us 600 new APIs, which I'll be sure to take a look at inside of Xcode, just for iOS 17.4. It's just so you can sideload apps onto your phone. And when creating an app that you can sideload, you basically gotta approve a prompt. Let's see if I can find it real fast. I don't think they added images, but I did see an image on X. But in this article, they do warn multiple times that, you, that Apple will not be able to handle refunds, handle any of that kind of stuff, which I guess is fine for most of you, but it's more convenient. But yeah, but the Digital Markets Act also requires Apple to change a couple of things. Now, one of the things they have to change is with the Google Chrome app, basically. So inside of Europe, you're, you will not be able to restrict what browser engine is used so every single browser for now is basically a reskin of Safari since they all use the WebKit engine right here. But Apple will not be allowed to do that anymore. They will, in, just inside of Europe. And you'll be able to pick and choose whatever browser and will use whatever engine you want. I know Chrome has decided to make their own Chromium engine just in case something like this would happen. They have not released it yet, but I'm sure it will release sometime in a bit. And I'm sure Google Chrome, Microsoft Edge, all those people will probably be using Chromium once it does come out. Since Apple has kind of been monopolizing it there, I kind of understand why, but it's mostly just to make sure Mac website support with Safari is completely fine since if you optimize it for phone, it's already optimized for the Mac, which this will not come into any other countries besides the 27 countries in the European Union. Now the else with the EU is that Apple has to open up payment methods. So you'll probably be able to use Google Pay on your iPhone, but just in the EU, once again, and I think you'll be able to upload these to the App Store. You won't be restricted to Apple Pay anymore. You'll be able to use Google Pay or even Samsung Pay if they bring it or other payment methods. Maybe Venmo will do something. They just have to open up the NFC chip inside of the iPhone because of Apple Pay right here. Since Apple Pay is the only way you can do contactless payment as of right now, but that is all gonna be changing once again on my birthday. Now, the last thing that the Digital Market Acts requires, but this one is a little bit different because it is gonna be across the entire world, you'll be able to install cloud gaming apps from the App Store here. So you won't be able to restrict cloud gaming apps anymore inside the EU. Now they could easily just say it's EU only, but Apple decided they're nice enough. And we're probably gonna see Xbox cloud gaming and other cloud gamings on the iPhone as native apps. Oh, and because of this, Fortnite has actually announced that they will be bringing Fortnite back to the iPhone but there's a little catch because they're gonna wanna sideload apps. But they did say they are gonna try to convince a bunch of lawmakers to change regulations and say that Apple is breaking the law, which I don't think they are. I think adding sideloading is a pretty messed up thing that Epic Games is doing. But I do wish I could play Fortnite because I kind of missed Fortnite OG. And yeah, I was an OG player back in the days. Now, if you're wondering about WatchOS 10.4 and macOS Sonoma 14.4, that has not yet come out. I expect both of those to come out sometime tomorrow. They probably needed a little bit more time to fix a couple of things. All right, when can we expect iOS 17.4 to release to everyone? I think it's a lot sooner than you think. Because if we go back into here, Apple does say that they want to get this by March of 2024. So beginning in March and all you'll be able to get all of these things. That means iOS 17.4 should come out sometime this week right here or the week before. I think we'll be right here, but however, it could possibly be on my birthday right here, but I'm not sure, but it could also be on the 4th. That also seems pretty likely. So if I had to bet my money, it would be on the 4th, but it'll be kind of cool having an iOS update on, on your birthday, but it's probably not happening to be honest. However, now that I come to think of it, I don't think it's coming out on my birthday because it will probably need to come out at least on the 5th because of time zone. And Apple always releases stuff later in the day in the EU because of time zones. And it's like 11 o'clock for me, so that translates over 
to like 7 o'clock in Europe. Anyways, that's iOS 17.4. Thanks for watching. Comment, like, subscribe, share this with your friends. I'll come out with a macOS video as soon as Apple releases that. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.